the fact that you're here in in uh, my community, my class, you're probably you tend to be more of a caretaker, <laughs> okay? And um, and I honor you for that because the world needs caretakers, and people need caretakers, and it's um, you're you're going to be rewarded uh, abundantly, uh, <laughs> if not in this life, at least in the next life. Uh, so good karma uh, for, for for caretaking. And at the same time, caretaking is enormously energy consuming, whether it's uh, an elderly person you're care caretaking for or a, or a baby, right? Like both, <laughs> both ends of the spectrums are very extremely time consuming and energy consuming and, and also discombobulating. You know, it's like you can't plan. It's hard to calendar. You might capture and categorize, but the calendar part is like, forget it. It's like, you know, my dad needs me now, or my baby needs me now, um, or, or whatever. It's like, so, so, so that's hard. It, it really is, you know, that I, I, please comment below if you have any tips, right, for, for other caretakers. Um, I haven't been in that situation for a long time. I know there, that's probably coming up for me. So I don't, I don't feel like I'm qualified to speak to it other than to name that that is, a clear sense of overwhelm and i'm calling out your ideas and tips for for those of you who are in that situation of caretaking how do you manage your overwhelm regards to that um because you can't plan your time or see i so that this is the one part where from a non-caretaker side which like i said i think i have that non-caretaker privilege which uh, I'm going to speak into the caretaker situation unfairly right now, <laughs> but let me speak since because I maybe I'm less biased than you are because you're in that situation. I'm not. Um, from the non-caretaker side, we can just say that's easier for us. It's easier for me to keep boundaries because I can close the door and not have a baby on the other side or an elderly person on the other side saying I need help right now. You got to drop everything right now and caretaker for me, so I can close the door right? Like boundaries. And uh, I have learned over the years to deal with the guilt of my parents saying I don't visit enough. <laughs> it's like, so I have a sense of caretaking in that way, because I'm, I'm one of, you know, I'm, I'm of three brothers, I'm one of the brothers that's closest. So I really should go visit them more often, taking a flight, short flight to Las Vegas, blah, blah. But, um, but yeah, and, and I just have had to, so I, in a sense, I've had some long distance caretaking, and setting emotional boundaries to say, no, I'm going to just visit a few times a year. And brother, uh, no matter what guilt you give me, uh, I, I and and parents, you know, I still boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Uh, you can take care of yourselves for now uh, before I visit, you know. And so it it is. It is essentially, I don't know how to say it, but it's the exposure to feeling mean <laughs> and callous and realizing. And really, it's this is a real thing. It's like all of us who are so nice. Um, the exposure to what does it feel like to set boundaries and feel guilty and like a bad person and like a bad fill in the blank uh, child, parent, friend, neighbor, fill in the part partner, fill in the blank. Um, the exposure to feeling that, realizing that oh. I feel that way, but is it objectively true that I'm a bad parent, child, friend, partner? You know, um, no, because I, no, nobody can say what is how much time you objectively need to spend time with your dad, or with your child, or with your partner, or with your friend or neighbor. No, who, who's to say? Do, do you spend ninety eight percent of your time, or do you is that is that enough, or is eighty percent enough, or forty percent enough? Or twenty percent enough, and how much time do and, and and energy do we spend with the loved one that starts to enable their lack of caretaking for themselves? Now, again, people who are literally on the hospital bed—that's different, right? Or babies—that's different. Maybe that's different, but there's always a spectrum because babies can learn to walk, and people in hospital beds—I don't know—they learn to self-regulate in their own ways. I don't. I don't. Again speaking from a point of privilege here and unfairly into your situation. So I apologize, but, but I'm just giving you some, some perspectives to, to reflect on 
and and seeing whether there is something you can do um, in that regard. And let me go ahead and pause the chat and see, uh, pause my recording and see um, if people are yelling at me. So give me a moment. Yeah, and there is a, a thread here um, in the chat about the importance of asking for help. And, um, you know, in my situation, my brother says, hey, I can't visit parents this month. I'm on a business trip. W will you go? So that's him asking me for help. And at the same, you know, ironically, I'm turning this around now. And I could say, sorry, I just visited uh, last month and I'm already planning to visit again in uh, Christmas and I'm visiting the, the in-laws this month. So, um, no, I can't go. Uh, and just, that's an example of setting boundaries that says, no, they can take care of themselves while neither of us are visiting this month. And, and thankfully, right now they can. And if something happens, they know how to ask for help, right? And they can ask, uh, and we can ask for help too. But, but yeah, it's, it's the situation where, um, you know, so many of you, I don't know, maybe you, because you're so nice and you're so accommodating, you've become like the, the person to take care of others in your family. And that's, that, that, that dynamic is obviously not healthy for your business. <laughs> it's healthy for their, their lives. Um, but, but, you know, so, so it, anyway, I, I'll stop here because this is a, a, a topic fraught with emotions and uh, potential resentment, uh, maybe towards me for not, <laughs> not understanding your situation. I totally get it. No, I don't. I totally get that. I don't understand your situation that I get. And so um, I look forward to your comments below to see what what would you say to yourself or what would you say to another caretaker uh, about about this situation? So um, so yeah, so I think that's that's a that's a good point to end this particular segment here, and then we can we can go on to uh, to additional discussions. And I'll, I'll just say one more thing. I mean, from a from a kind of a I don't know what the perspectives would be, ontological or philosophical or spiritual perspective. Each of us is essentially born into this life alone. And each of us is essentially alone throughout our whole lives. And I had to learn this lesson too, because in, in my relationship early on with my wife, I was really needy. And she taught me this lesson and it was a bad, it was, it felt really bad to learn it because, you know, it's like once, once I got married, I'm like, oh, I'll never be alone anymore emotionally or, or physically or otherwise. And there was never be a, a feeling of loneliness ever again. Those of you who are in relationships, long-term relationships are laughing, right? Obviously that's ontologically, I, I'm not, I'm not using the word correctly. Maybe, I don't know. You can tell me what the word is correctly, but, and maybe um, existentially. Each of us is alone, our whole lives, from birth to death. And when someone comes in and helps us, it's a blessing. It's a gift. It's a, it's a temporary relief from the deep loneliness that is, I think, true of, of each of us born into this life with the veil, not seeing the what I would call the unconditional outpouring love of God and spirits all around us. Truthfully, I believe we're never alone, you, you know, but the veil is so thick from, from here to the other side. It's so thick that we can't literally see our guardian angels right now, you know, placing their, sh their hands on our shoulders and, and saying, no, you're and embracing us completely. Like that's where faith comes in, right? Like nobody is ever alone in, in one way. And Physically, all we can see physically is and touch is we're all alone always until death. And, uh, um, and so from that perspective, caretaking, your caretaking for someone else is a huge gift for every second you spend making them not alone is a huge gift, in my opinion. And yeah, and and if you do that, you when they get accustomed to it, they get attached, they get dependent, and they forget that they, as all of us, must regulate and deal with 
the existential fact of aloneness. Um, and that nobody, nobody is entitled to caretaking. Nobody. It's all a gift. And so when someone complains or puts guilt, they're just still learning <laughs> about this existential fact of aloneness. Something like that. I, I hope this is helpful in some way. And the, remember, on the flip side, they are never alone. Even when we're not there, they're never alone. I look forward to your comments below. <laughs>